Hey everyone, welcome back. Happy May 4th. So I got a cool idea to show you guys today. It's called dual agent simulation. So we all know large language model. You can make an API call of ChatGPT or Llama or Google's Palm, whatever, right? You make a ChatGPT call, send in a sentence, it will give you some response back. Fine, we know that, we've done that. Many videos online have discussed that before. That's cool. We also have LangChain. LangChain relies on chain of thoughts. Essentially, is a for loop that iteratively checks the response of an answer coming out of a large language model API call, and then it just keep going. Now, that sounds fancy, but exactly how does that work, right? If you use a LangChain package off the shelf, it might get you right answer, it might get you bad answer, we don't know. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a simple simulation to kind of try to make that process a little bit more transparent. So we are trying to create a chatbot that we can press a button, that there are two agents that are carrying on the conversation continuously. And then we're gonna set a stop rule Hopefully we don't trigger infinite loop, right? So we set some sort of stop rule to stop the conversation somewhere, and then we're gonna see how that goes. So with that being said, let's turn our attention to the screen. So here's a screen that I'm looking at. It's a app designed using Streamly application. The backend is coded by Python, and I'm hosting this app on Hugging Face. And let's take a look at the backend. Backend, it's a app.py script, and how I wire this app together is essentially a while loop. And then this while loop will continue unless there's some sort of stopping rule in the end to break the loop, okay? So let's take a look inside of this loop. So inside of this loop, we have some sort of prompt starting the initialization of the conversation. Let's say ask a question about a whatever topic that the user asked, user entered. And then based on that topic, the interviewer is going to give a question. Now, you might be confused, right? What kind of interviewer are we talking about? Interviewer here is defined as a call llama function. It's essentially an API call to llama3. So I create a copy of llama three times, actually. First one is interviewer. This is the person that's going to ask the question. The second duplicate is interviewee. This is essentially another API call that trying to answer the question. Now there's a third agent that's actually called judge. This is another API call to Llama. There are three independent API calls. They have their own prompts. And then we're gonna design a scenario where they interact with each other. So how does that work? Well, we start with a prompt. The interviewer is gonna ask a question based on whatever the human user entered in the beginning. And then the second API called a second agent is going to take that question as a prompt and then it's gonna to try to construct an answer in a mediocre way. Now, I instructed this on purpose because I want the conversation to continue. I want this while loop to continue, but I don't wanna continue forever. So somewhere down the road, let's say iteration uh, when it hits number five, so when it hits the fifth iteration, I want this person to get a little bit more smarter. Now, how does that work is I designed a third agent, right? This agent is called judge. It's an API call that evaluates and provides feedback of the answer based on the question. Answer come from interviewee, question come from the interviewer. So that's why you see this judge API call here has two input and one is question one is answer and the judge is going to provide something right some sort of feedback and that feedback i call it judge comments so as this iteration hits number five so once we enter the fifth iteration the interviewee is going to try to get smarter so we're going to say hey you learn from the judge comments now right you're not just a mediocre interviewee so from that point on i'm going to feed in the judge comments as a prompt to the interviewee, hopefully the interviewee can learn something about it. So that's how these three agents interact with each other. In simple terms, it's just three separate API calls 
independently, they have their own prompts, and then hopefully they carry on their own personality. And I've already tried this with Llama 3. I think Llama 3 has that long-term memory to carry on the personality. So we're gonna see how this goes. And then to make the conversation even more transparent, now obviously I append all the answers, right? All of the outputs, answers, questions, judge comments, passing or not pass, right? I collect all of them, put them in a nice table, and obviously in the end, I want to display the table in front of us. And then obviously we have a stopping rule, right? So based on the judge comments, if they rated eight, then obviously you want to break the loop. And then this is incremental, right? It's not gonna jump to nine and then that will not make any sense because nine technically speaking is better than eight. So the assumption is we don't worry about that caveat situation for now. We're assuming this is incremental. Once it hits eight, we're just gonna stop it. So with that being said, that's how the app wired together. Now let's take a look at the actual user interface. So this is the user interface and how the app looks like. On the left hand side, there's an instruction menu. You can read about it if you want. And then down here, there is a topic. You can enter a topic. I'm gonna say machine learning. And then you can hit the button wrong simulation. So we hit that button. It's gonna say, hey, what are some common techniques used to handle problem of overfitting in machine learning models? How do they differ in terms of their ability? And as you can see here, the first answer is not meant to be a complicated answer. It's not meant to be sophisticated answer. It's going to be a little bit mediocre. So that's why you see, hey, overfitting, <laughs> that's a thing, right? Nervous laugh, things like that. And then you see this is still running, right? Top right corner, this script, it's still running. It will continuously running until it hit that stopping rule, which is the score being the eight, right? Ask another question, um, not so sure, right? And then ask another question, um, nervous laugh, not so sure, until hopefully the starting from the fifth iteration, uh, we start getting a little bit better. Uh, so here, what are some common uh, techniques used to handle class imbalance, right? This is another machine learning question, right? Let's see how it does. No good, keep going. And then here's another question, no good, keep going until sometime down the road, it stops. So now you see the script stopped, the top right corner, the running button disappeared, right? And the script now stopped. And then you see the final explanation. As you can see, we collected all these iterations from zero, and then we collect questions, we collect answer, judge comments, whether it's passed or not passed, right? Zero means it's not passed, right? Hopefully somewhere down there, we see a number one, that means it's passed. And then you just keep seeing this comes to carrying over until somewhere down the road, uh, hopefully it starts to get better. And then finally, this is uh, iteration number eight. You see that, hey, here's another question. Uh, you try to answer it uh, this time a little bit more sophisticated. And then finally, the judge, which is the last column here in this table says, ah, we'll finally rate this an eight out of 10. And here's a strength, right? And that's a feedback. And then obviously in the end, you pass the test. Once you pass the test, stop the while loop, and then that finishes the conversation. Uh, so this finishes one simulation. And as you can see, it's a giant while loop that iterates eight rounds, and number eight is written down here, and then here's the entire flow of the conversation. So there you go. Hopefully this video sheds some lights of exactly how does it work when someone say chain of thoughts, and this is how I envision chain of thoughts or chain of abstraction works, if that's something you're interested in. I'm not saying that this is the most sophisticated chain of thoughts. This is how I envision how chain of thoughts work. And hopefully this video, we make the concept a little bit more transparent. So with that being said, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you do give a like and hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys in the next episode.